Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about speciation and cladograms. So speciation is one species giving rise to another species or branching off into separate species and that is accomplished through a couple of different mechanisms. So we've got geographic isolation which is where they are physically split because somehow gene flow is stopped. So the Grand Canyon shows up or a giant earthquake separates them like in old school movies like Land Before Time, things like that. They geographically cannot reach reach each other anymore and because of that gene flow stops and we have different homelands. We've seen an evidence of this in the Grand Canyon with the Bear and Kaibab squirrels. They're on opposite sides of the Grand Canyon. Even though they could have at one time been the same species, they no longer can interbreed and they have separated into two separate groups. And as you can see, they have distinct different features because maybe later on the Kaibab squirrel got these long ear tufts, cool new feature. They can't ever genetically share those with the squirrels on the other side of the Grand Canyon because there is no gene flow. They don't reach each other, the populations don't mix. So mutations, new features that show up on one side of the Grand Canyon will no longer be seen on the other side of the Grand Canyon. And we have two distinct species created because of that. Reproductive isolation, this slide got really messed up, but this is similar um, because once again, we've stopped breeding, but this is not stopping breeding because they're on opposite sides of the Grand Canyon. This time it's because something is separating them before they mate or after they mate. So pre-zygotic means pre-mating and that simply means that for whatever reason they can't fertilize an egg and a sperm can't come together and you cannot make an offspring. So this would be like you can't make a hybrid puppy kitten creature. The sperm and eggs just are not compatible. You can't do that. But we also have post-zygotic isolation, which is, yes, they can successfully interbreed. There is fertilization, but there's something wrong with that offspring. That hybrid could be sterile, or it could be very short-lived, never reach reproductive fertility age, that kind of thing. So all of those would be examples of uh, reproductive isolation. And so we've got this picture here. Same homeland is sympatric speciation caused by reproductive isolation. So you're living together, but for whatever reason, you stop interbreeding successfully. Different homeland or geographic isolation is going to cause this, where something separates you. One side of the Grand Canyon is going to start to look like different than the other, and you're going to have two different species because they've been split so long. Um, these are just some really cheesy Vikings jokes to make your day bright. There you go. Um, so cladistics is the study of evolutionary relationships, and we use that using a diagram to show common characteristics, and it makes the assumption that more closely related organisms are going to share more traits. So these are ideas, it's a hypothesis, it's a possible explanation for reproductive, I'm sorry, for evolutionary relationships. So the way I want you to think about it is to think about a phone. Let's say, for example, that you go... And you can see phones have changed greatly. But even if you don't talk about like all the way back to a, a Motorola X900 or whatever, the old ones that used to have a brick or a battery in them, if you just talk about an iPhone, let's say you get the newest iPhone, but the moment you leave the store, it no longer does any updates and you can't download any new apps. So your iPhone 7 will not have the same features as the iPhone 10, right? Because after you left the store, no new updates, no new apps. And you're going to eventually have very different features on both of those phones. And the newest edition is going to have everything the old iPhone had, but maybe now it's got an extra camera. And it has access to 5G networks and things like that. So these newer features are going to come along. And it's going to look very different than the older phone, but they're going to still have some features in common, right? iPhones all have the one center button, and they've all got the same base operating system, right? So if you think about that analogy here, um, you've, they're all phones, right? They're all related to each other, but you've got a rotary phone here where you have a combined speaker and microphone. Um, you've got a touch dial on the actual handset. And then we had our very first cordless phones and then mobile phones. We had the old ones and then we developed texting and then we got smartphones. So you can see that they're all still phones. They all still dial. Everything beyond this point is a cordless phone but a mobile phone is different than a cordless phone, and a flip phone is different than a smartphone. So you can see that as these upgrades come along, we can see the relationship and potentially the age of all of these different phones. 
We're going to apply the same thing here to different organisms. So if you look at this cladogram, you will see that all of these organisms have four limbs. That's one trait that they all have in common. But then individual one, whatever that thing is, left the Apple Store before any other updates came along. So he left. He's got four limbs, but he left before we had this trait or this upgrade of a tail. And then individual three over here, he left before we evolved spikes. And individual four, he left before wings showed up. Everybody after this has wings. But this individual, too, left before horns showed up. So you can see that each one of these features separates one group from the next, and they all have things in common back here to four limbs. And so if it is to the left of the individual, it's stuff that they have in common with previous ancestors. If it's stuff that's to the right, that's, that's things that they don't share with their ancestor. So this cute little dragony guy here, individual four, he shares spikes, tail, and limbs. Okay, He's got this in common with everybody after him, but he does not have wings or horns, so those would be differences between them. You can see the same thing here with these individuals. So we've got a cobra, uh, a bird, another bird, an ibex, I think it's some sort of deer, a camel. They're all desert animals. And you can see that cobras left the Apple Store before the update of limbs. Everything after this has limbs. So we've got birds, but there's definitely a difference between these two little guys. So this bird has a bald head, this bird does not. And then here, live birth. So everything after this point is going to be a mammal. And then we have a branch that has hooves. These guys don't have hooves, but this branch left and then developed hooves. These guys have horns, these guys don't. These guys have binocular vision or forward vision that you have depth perception. Um, the gerbil does not. So you can see that there are traits that separate them. So here's a, another cladogram and some questions similar to the ones that you might see on today's homework. What trait separates lampreys from tuna? on this cladogram. So you'd find lampreys, you'd find tuna, and you'd see what's in between them. And that answer is jaws. What separates a salamander from a turtle? You would look at salamander, you would look at turtle, and the thing that interrupts that um, connection, that relationship, is that salamanders do not have an amniotic egg. Which organism is most closely related to the leopard, shares most of the characteristics of a leopard? It's actually turtle. As you can see, there's only one trait difference between a turtle and a leopard on this cladogram, whereas everything else you'd have hair, eggs, legs, and jaws before you get to the lamprey. Which organism's DNA will differ the most from a leopard? It's going to be this guy way down here at the end called a lancelet. It's um, very similar to like a hagfish or things like that, lampreys. Um, and the reason why their DNA is going to be so different is because they lack all of the programming for all of these traits. The vertebrae, the jaws, the legs, the hair, all of that. They don't have that DNA programming, so their DNA is going to be very, very different than the leopard. So when you're thinking about this, I want you to also think about human evolution and patterns in human evolution. What you see here is that 13 million years ago is the last time we had updates, upgrades, software in common with orangutans. And then they branched off. They left the Apple Store and did not get any of the upgrades that everybody else had. And then 8 million years ago, we see genetically that that is the last time that we were in the Apple Store at the same time as gorillas, chimpanzees, all of us in the same time. Gorillas branched off. They have many updates that we never got, and we have updates that they never got. And then you can see here chimpanzees and bonobos are very closely related. They have 24 pairs of chromosomes each. But they left the Apple Store, and we stayed, and we got a whole bunch of updates, a whole bunch of features, traits, and characteristics that none of these other have. Yes, we're all mammals. Yes, we are all primates in that primate group, but we are unique. We're the only group that has 23 pairs of chromosomes, and we have so many features. Um, in fact, a one-year-old baby has more intelligence capability than any other primate combined. So we've got a lot of updates that nobody else had, and you can see that the last time we shared any DNA programming with any of the other primates was about six million years ago. And one hypothesis for how humans have kind of branched off and formed many different species over time is here. But as you remember from the very beginning, these are hypotheses. And as we start getting more data, finding more fossils, doing better genetic testing, we're revising this and looking at, oh, maybe actually we're closer related to this group or that group, or the time frame is off for this group and that group. 
So keep that in mind as we continue that every cladogram and the study of cladistics, it's a suggested explanation for how things are interrelated and that those ideas do change as we get new evidence. That's all I've got for you today. Hope you guys have a fantastic day and good luck on your assignment. Doesn't stop when I ask it to.